see you again. I hope every, uh, you and your family are doing well through all this. Uh, let's just start there. Is there any serious talk about J.C. playing receiver? Uh, it's always serious talk about good players getting the ball in their hands. But, you know, right now he's focused on corner. Um, he's focused on being a punt returner. Um, that's one of the things that he need to do a better job of. Um, he had some opportunities last year, but just hadn't got a bunch of reps at it and wasn't so comfortable doing it. And um, so put it on him this summer, um, put him on him this spring. That, that's something that we need him to do for our football team because he's an electrifying athlete and can be really good with the balling team. So he got to go be comfortable enough to go make the plays and, and make the catches that he need to make. And also, have you guys looked at Israel any at safety? Yeah, so, you know, in different packages, you go back to, you know, a couple of seasons ago. I mean, Izzy is a freshman. Um, he played a little bit of safety. He played a little bit last year. Um, he's a multiple guy. He's a, a very smart, intelligent guy that can learn multiple spots in the secondary. And um, so in some of the nickel packages to get Cam in the game at corner, John in the game at corner, we'll put Izzy sometimes at safety. Um, he can do some of those different things like that. He's a versatile guy that way. Ben Briner. Uh, hey, Coach. Uh, thanks for doing this. And uh, uh, focusing on that safety position, where do you feel it It, it kind of is between RJ, Jalen, those guys? How, how do you feel it, it sort of is a few days into camp? Um, I think those guys have been doing a really good job. Um, obviously, you know, if you just go back, and, and I know this has kind of been different, um, just doing all this, you know, not being able to see the guys. But we have met with the guys so much via Zoom um, that I feel like we're ahead, to be honest with you. Um, going out, guys was a little more aware of freshmen, was a little more aware of what we were trying to get accomplished so we can advance and move the defense a little faster than normal. Um, so, But I've really um, been really pleased with those guys. You look at R.J. Roderick, you look at Jamie Robinson, you look at Jalen Dickerson, you look at Shiloh Sanders, you look at even poaching from this corner position and putting Israel there. That's looking at five guys that can come in and, and can be very successful at safety. So those guys got to continue to come. Um, but I think they're doing a really good job of what we're giving them so far. Colin? Hey, T-Rob, I guess kind of you talked about Cam Smith a little bit. Just what kind of development have you seen from him after what was a pretty strong start to his spring until now two days into practice? That's right. I'll tell you what, man, he's, he's doing a really good job. Um, he's a guy who's probably one of the fastest guys we have on our football team. He's very quick. Um, he's gaining some weight, need to get up a little more. I think he's like 180 right now. We want to give him the 185 um, before we kick it off. But he's a guy who's earned some, some playing time, and, and, and that's what I've been on him about. You know, we're not going to let him play just to play. You know, he got to earn his right to play, and he's doing a good job of that. Um, hanging with J.C. and Izzy more than he had in the past, and um, I think that's been very beneficial for him. Um, but Cam's a talented player, um, probably one of the um, most talented guys we have just from head to toe, I mean, the things that he's able to do. So we just got to continue to work him and learn his techniques and, and be on top of just the details of his position. And um, we got some really talented guys in front of him, and um, that's a good problem to have for me. Um, he needs to continue to work, and it helps – Izzy and JC it pushed them every single day when they see him making plays and progressing. It make those guys play better. The competition brings the best out of us all. Eric Boynton. Coach, when you have uh, two supremely co talented cornerbacks like you guys have that you're obviously not afraid to leave out there on an island in one-on-one -on -one situations, how much flexibility does that help give you as far as scheming and, and game planning for opponents? It does. Um, exactly, you know, kind of to your point, um, I feel that we can do some different things. I think we can put those guys in some different places that we can add a little more pressure than we had. Um, those guys are a little more experienced. They were talented last year, but they weren't as experienced. And um, these guys are seasoned vets, and, and, and we're going to need them to play well. And, and that's kind of what I told those guys when we break away and we just meet as a defensive back group. I mean, we expect those guys to be the players that they're able to be. And those guys are, are very talented, and, and they don't have to play well. And we have a bunch of guys in our room, and, and it's a lot of competition. So. I'm excited about it. I think we can do some different things. We can play some man-to-man -man and, and, and do some different things outside and then pack it zone inside. So a couple of different options with those guys playing. Let's go to Mike Hoover. Well, Coach, obviously you guys lost some talented guys up on that, that D-line. You know, What are you looking at heading into camp right now, and who are some of the guys that you hope to be able to uh, step up as training camp continues to roll on? Um, I think inside, I think we, we're in a good place. You look at KT, who played a lot of football. You look at Jabari Ellis. You look at Zach Pickens, I think he's coming along very nicely, um, being the talented guy that recruited and, you know, got a chance to play a little bit last year. But I think he's coming along. I think Coach Rock has been tremendous for him. He's very hard and dependent on those guys, and I think that's what they needed. Um, but they're doing a good job. And then you look at the young guys, and I've been very, very impressed with Alex Huntley. I've been very impressed with Micaiah Scott. And Rick Sandage is also a guy who's coming 
and, and, and doing a lot better as well. So we, we feel decent about the guys that we have inside. And I think some of those guys, the Zachs of the world, the KTs of the world, the Jabars, they, they, they're going to have to play well and got to replace Javon Kinlaw, who, who was a great player for us. Um, then you look outside of defense and Aaron Sterling's been a staple here for a while. Um, uh, you look at J.J. and Barre, who will play some in, who will play some buck. We'll be able to stand him up and do some different things like that. So he'll be the guy that replaced Dennis Warner, for, uh, for lack of a better word. Um, and then you look at Brad Johnson, who he's playing at buck and sub packages. And then we plan him a little bit of Sam in regular packages. So, so we got a good versatile amount of guys. And you look at the young guys, and I think probably from that group, it'll be Tonka Hemingway, a guy who for the first two practices has been outstanding. I mean, he, in my mind, over the last two, three practices or whatever we had so far, and then you go back to the OTAs, he'd probably be a guy who you would say he, he, he's, he's a more Dennis Warner mentality type of guy. I mean, know what to do already. Do it the right way all the time. Always on time. Always doing the stuff right. I think he can be a staple in our program for a long time. And, Coach, I don't know if you have this philosophy, but I know some coaches on the defensive side of the ball believe this, that the closer you are to the football, it's maybe tougher to get some of the younger guys going quicker. You know, what are some of the challenges for those younger guys you think just to be able to go in comparison to, like, a corner or a safety? Oh, yeah, closer you get to the ball, the harder it is. I mean, you look at those guys up front, they're going against 600 pounds, you know, when they first, when they, when they face a double team. Well, Alex Huntley didn't go against that when he was in high school. Makai Scott didn't go against that in high school. A lot of those times, those guys was a lot better than the guys they were playing, and they were able to whip those guys before the double team even got there. Um, but it's a different level. But those guys are adjusting well. They really are. And I've been very proud of those guys, and I think, you know, we're on them hard, and, and we're asking a lot. They're going to have to play, you know, in this conference, especially, you know, with the schedule now. I mean, we're playing all conference games. So there's no get your feet wet. You know, your feet better be wet right before you start the first ball game. Right, and, and those guys doing a good job, but we hadn't put on pads, you know. So I say that to say this. I mean, right now they are freshmen, and um, they're gonna have their highs and their lows. But right now they've been doing very well. Let's go to Chandler Mack. All right, Coach T. Rob, just talk to me a little bit about Jordan Birch and uh, what you've seen from him so far. Um, you know, obviously he was number one recruit and all that. So, yeah, talk to me about some of the impact that you've seen from him and do you expect him possibly to play um, on Saturdays and everything during the season? Talk me about that. Absolutely. He, he, he needs to continue to keep coming. Um, he's learning what to do. Um, he's playing the buck position also um, where he got to be a stand-up guy. He got to be a guy to put his hand in the dirt a little bit. Um, and he's doing a good job of that. But Jordan's a great athlete right now, just learning how to play with his hands. I think that's probably the, the, the hardest thing for a young player to do um, is, is learn to play with their hands and get people off. And I think that's one of the things that he's working on right now, and he's doing a good job of it. Um, Coach Peterson done developed a bunch of guys since we've been here, and, and he does an outstanding job with those guys. But Jordan's a guy that's, that's, that's archly talented and, um, and, and can't wait to see him continue to develop. John Whittle. Hey, T. Rob, I, I don't know how long your uh, relationship with Mike Bobo goes back, but uh, just being around him at least for the last eight months or so, were you surprised at, at, at that uh, newspaper story that was written, some of the allegations that were le levied against him? Yeah, um, Coach Bobo's been nothing but great. Um, he, he's been uh, a huge attribute to the staff. Um, he's been he's been unbelievable, to be honest with you. Um, I think he probably got the best relationship in the room with J.C. and Izzy. He comes in here, he... He messed with those guys all the time, and um, he, he's been awesome. But really enjoy him, being around him. He's been awesome, and um, can't wait to see him on game day because, I mean, I tell you what, man, it, it's difficult to practice against him. They got a bunch of multiple formations, a bunch of different personnel groupings, different tempos. I mean, they're hard to defend, and there's some stuff that you, you got to be locked in on. So they're challenging me as a defensive coordinator, challenging me as a defensive back coach to be able to adjust on the run. And um, it's been great for our guys. Um, some different looks, some different formations, some different groupings, and um, it's been it's been awesome. And different personnel. Colin Taylor. Hey, T. Rob, you kind of talked about Tonka a little bit, called him outstanding. I guess just from a guy that played so many different sports in high school, never really got acquainted to the weight room. Maybe as some other guys that are coming in. How have you seen his body develop, and what kind of impact do you think he can have potentially? Yeah, right, to yeah, right now, um, I, I want to say Tonka is two sixty five. Um, and he fluctuates. He's been a little bigger than that before. And then when he was playing basketball his last year at Conway, um, he, he was 245. Um, but, you know, Tonka, he has been working out more than we think. 
his dad, his dad's get him up every morning and, and they've been working out since I've been recruiting. Um, but he, he, he does a great job, but yeah, to, to, to allude to your point, I mean, he, he, he's, he's doing just football right now. And the first time this ever happened in his life and, and, and he's excelling in, 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 in a high way. So excited about Tonka, obviously got a long, long, long way to go, but, but his, he got the right mindset and we talk in terms of as a great football, but you got to have the right mindset first. And um, that's one of the things he's a worker. Um, he understands that he don't know everything and he, he's a sponge right now and, and, and it's going good, but he got good leadership in front of him. You look at a guy like Aaron Stirk, you look at a guy like JJ and Barre, you see Kier Thomas, guys that's been through this program for a while. Um, they understand how we want to play. They understand how we want to work. And um, I think they're doing a good job of, of, of mentoring those guys. Ben Brainer with the next question, Ben. Uh, what, what was it that made J.J. a guy that you – I believe you said you mentioned that he, he, he'll he play a good amount of buck. What made him sort of that kind of – a candidate to kind of do that? And mm -hmm. and also at the linebacker position, you guys have a little bit of uh, attrition with some injuries. What does that mm -hmm. kind of allow you to see? Well, I was – it was J.J.'s always been a very athletic guy. Um, he can move his hands and his feet at the same time. He got great pass rush ability. Um, he's athletic enough to do what we're asking him to do at the buck position. But as you know, we play some three down where he'll stand up some, and then we play a lot of four down also where he'll play his normal position, which is in. Um, so it's not too much to ask for him to do those things, but he's more than athletic enough and capable enough to do those things. Um, your second question at linebacker, um, we, we got a lot of moving parts right now with Ernest being out for a little bit, um, but it allows guys like Monty Staley to go play Mike for the first time. It allows guys like Sherrod Green to move around and play some different things. Um, so I thought that's been good. And then you look at Mo Caba, um, a freshman coming in off a knee injury. Um, never thought he'll be in a situation that he's in getting all the rest. He's getting early in practice. And he's doing a good job with it. Um, it's a lot to play linebacker at South Carolina. I mean, it's a lot on you. And um, he's doing a good job of meeting extra with Coach Wilson and uh, and Coach Muschamp. Those guys coach those guys together. So Coach Muschamp been out of my room a little bit. Um, so he's been messing more in, in a linebacker room with those guys. So, so it's been interesting. It's been good. And, and we got some good guys going there and we'll be fine. David. Tira, how important is it to have that voice in the middle of the field? You know, maybe your middle linebacker, but just somewhere in the middle to coordinate your defense, to, to call audibles. And you've had a guy like Sky that could do that. You've had Ernest. How important is it to have that or, or is it important to have that? It's very important, especially when you have young guys up front waiting on a tight call, waiting on what side we're running the blitz to, whether it's a pressure to the back, whether it's a pressure to the tight end, whether it's a pressure to the split inside or whatever it is. I mean, those guys kind of waiting, but you know, we're such uh, ahead of time at, at, in the defensive line room that those guys getting it called and, and they know the tight call, they know where the pressure coming. So so they've been doing a good job with that. And Damani's getting a lot better at it. If you know Damani, you know he's not talking, um, but he's been talking more than he had to in his career. I bet I didn't hurt Damani on the field more than I heard him in three years right, in three practices. I mean, he, he got a set and tight call, and, and we're demanding on him to do that. And he's been doing a great job of adjusting to that. But, you know, I've been really pleased with Damani. I really have. And um, he's doing a really good job. Hill. Hey, Coach. Uh, obviously, Ernest Hinton on the field going through practice, taking the reps and stuff. But what is he able to do with you guys as far as in the meeting rooms and maybe being out there, like, helping Damani or Mo or some of the other guys? Yeah, he, he's in the meeting with those guys. He. He's at practice with a script in his hand um, when he's not doing some of the stuff that he had to do for rehab. But he's he, he's been he's been really good for those guys. But you know those guys are, they, they're hard on each other. Uh, those guys want to be good, and um, they understand that 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 we have to be good at that position, and, and they're working their butts off to do that. But I think Damani, Sherrod, Mo Kaba, you know some of those guys they're, they're doing a good job. There. And with Coach Wilson, what what's he what's Coach Wilson brought to the staff since coming on board? Obviously. Coming in late in the spring, but but how have you seen him kind of integrate himself with you guys? I tell you what, man, you know, he 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 he's a worker. You know, he's the first guy in the building, and um, it shows by the preparation that he has. I mean, it's hard to come in and learn all this stuff. Sometimes we just kind of talking through the defense, and I might just say something and act like he knows it, but he wasn't in the room with us for for eight, nine, ten years like Coach Muschamp and myself. So just having to break down certain things, like this is what we're saying right there. This is how we handle the stacks. You know, to play linebacker, you got to know what's going in on the back end and you got to know what's going on up front. So when we start gaming and doing those different things, it's putting a lot on those guys. But 
I think from 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 an intelligence standpoint, he's been awesome. Um, he's a great guy. He's a relationship guy, and um, he's a game cut. And um, that's very important to our guys because he can sit and talk to them from a different perspective, even more so than I can. You know, being a, a game card player and what it means to 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 to, to wear the block C on your helmet. Colin Taylor. Yeah, I guess you know you've been. I know recruiting is kind of in a weird spot right now where you're not able to bring guys on campus and and go out and see them. But I guess how has recruiting gone for you guys? What's it been like in I guess now the age of Zoom and trying to FaceTime guys? Yeah, it's, it's it's different, you know, because I'm a relationship, personable guy. And I miss the junior days. I miss sitting down with a family and, and talking about and getting a chance to kind of just sit there eyeball to eyeball. This is how I'm going to affect your son's life. You lose that. And, you know, it's you have to do it the best way you can. It's the time that we're living in via Zoom and, and, and all those things. But, yes, I think it, I, I think it does affect it in some way. You know, we we have a beautiful campus. We have beautiful facilities. We have some things that uh, that, that that they need to see, and, and they're obviously not able to see those things right now. But um, we're doing the best we can. Um, our graphic department, Justin King and his staff, do an amazing job of sending guys things, sending us things going out. I think Rod, you know, he had to miss a meeting the other day because he had to walk around the horseshoe and, and do some of the things like that so we can zoom some stuff out to some of those guys. So. We got to do it the best we can, but everybody's dealing with it, so we won't complain. We just got to keep working, and um, it's a long day, to si- long time of silence. We tell the staff that all the time. Keep recruiting. Maybe they commit somewhere else, whatever the case may be. Um, you got to do a great job of continuing to build our relationships, not only with the player, but also with the parents, and um, and, and that can be challenging um, doing it this way, but uh, look at this this press conference we had. I've been, I guess, defense coordinator now for four years, and I'm sitting here talking to guys that I know on a video screen. I mean, so it's just a different time right now, and and, and it's just something that you got to deal with. Um, don't worry about the circumstances. You got to continue to just fight what we got. But I, I like what we are recruiting as far as that is concerned. But um, when we can get the guys here, I, I think that'll be a little better. Ben Brenner. How have you seen Izzy attack this offseason, especially with kind of the, the ups and downs and the break and all that? And and how much, when you kind of look back, how much growth have you seen, you know, from him, from the kid who, who came on campus, you know, a couple of years ago? You know, you look at, and, and even if you say it from a couple of years, you just look at through the season of last year, you know, the one thing that we do when we sit down and, and we go through a point of attack tape, all right, these are the targets that came to you, mm-hmm. all right? So, Sometimes you got to ignore the outside noise. Um, Everyone around is saying he's going to be this, he's this, he's that. Well, let's go to facts. Let's look at the tape, all right, and let's see what do we need to improve upon to play better than we played last year. And I think that's one of the things about Israel um, that I admire the most. He's a a genuine, honest guy, and he understands and he can accept the coaching. And um, some of the things that he did as far as, you know, some of the past interferences that he had, some of the opportunities that had, yeah, he made a couple of ball plays. All right, but look at your whole entire uh, uh, amount of work. And um, he understands that. He understands that he got to get better, and he's more than capable of doing that. And you just look at his footwork and all the things that he's able to do over the quarantine, over the summer, and um, bring them to this point. And, and he's doing a really good job. Um, I think he was the player of the day the first day. Um, he mm-hmm. did a really good job of, of getting the ball off people. He did a really good job on the line of scrimmage, playing his press technique. And um, he's always been a worker, so. He just got to continue to keep it up, and um, he'll be fine. Any other questions for Coach Tira? I don't see any other hands up. All right, I got one mm-hmm. thing to say now. Go ahead. All right, we, our players starting um, they're starting classes today, and a lot of those classes are via Zoom. We be on these guys about showing their video doing the um, doing the Zoom. All right, I see a lot of black screens right here going on in here. I see guys laying in the bed, probably uh, doing their work. All right, so we got to be locked in when we do these things, all right? Screens on. That's what we told the players this morning. All right, you ain't coaching it. You're allowing it to happen, so I don't want to let it happen. Good? All right. All right, guys. Thank you. Let Queen Blitz face jump out.